a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state. The right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Shall not be infringed. Today, militia means the National Guard, but not in colonial times. Back in the late 18th century, militia was understood to include every single able-bodied male in the country. Most Americans who fought for the revolution were militia. Who the hell cares what a militia meant in 1789? What matters is whether people on the streets of Chicago ought to have guns in 2017. The defense of one's home and family, the ability to hunt, all this gets lost in the argument over the significance of a well-regulated militia. The Second Amendment is the only one that comes with its own justification. In modern English, we would say, because the necessity for a free state to have a well-regulated militia, the people shall have the right to keep and bear arms. Here's where your high school grammar comes in handy. The justification is in the subordinate clause. The right is in the principal clause. So the right exists without regard to the justification. So maybe they did mean that individuals should be able to keep firearms. But they meant that for an agrarian society in which firearms were barrel-loaded muskets and were made by artisans, not guns that were mass-produced, extremely deadly, and could be used in an urban environment. Now, would they have wanted their principle about individuals bearing arms to extend to today's society? Was that part of their meaning? Who knows? For two years in this country, there was no Second Amendment. Nobody said, well, we better pass this Declaration of Rights uh, because up until now, we have no freedom of speech and we have no freedom of the press and we have no right to keep and bear arms. And hooray, now that we've passed it, we've got it. Nobody said that. That's because that Declaration of Rights didn't change the rights that the people already had and nobody claimed that they did. But we the people are still arguing about exactly what that protects. Surely not shoulder-launched surface-to-air missiles, but what about... In over 200 years, the Supreme Court had never interpreted uh, to definitively determine whether it protects an individual right. And so I, along with uh, two colleagues, put together a kind of a test case, a civil rights case. That was District of Columbia versus Heller. In a landmark ruling in 2008, the Supreme Court upheld your right to own a gun, militia or not. Even though they split five to four, the difference was so much narrower. All nine of them agreed, number one, individuals do have a right to gun ownership, therefore disagreeing with a, a lot of liberals in the political sphere. And number two, all nine of them said, but it is subject to reasonable regulation, therefore disagreeing with a lot of conservatives out in the political sphere. The district enacted a new statute, and it was challenged and came before my court. We upheld those portions of the law that increased public safety, like getting an eyesight test, and held unconstitutional the provisions that really just burdened gun ownership. 